Hello, this is the general introduction to the DVD we produced. It's about total breadth concept and this introduction is a general history about the DVD, about the goals of the DVD and it gives an overview what you can expect in this DVD. Breathing is so normal we don't even think about it. And that's a problem, it's a fact for one side and that's good, but on the other side you can ask yourself is it necessary to think about it and this DVD will show that we think it's very important to think about it and to be aware about how to breathe and why to breathe. This is the case for patient care, for chronic pain for example, or in top class musicians or sportsmen, there are many uh, problems with breathing that we observed in clinical practice, but also in the field or when they are playing, and it gives functional limitations. And what we see in clinical practice is that there's not any awareness at any level, and we think that's a pity and we can improve a lot. The problem is, when we look in literature, you can't find um, much valid uh, or reliable information and that's a problem. For clinical practice, there are a lot of different conflicting expert opinions. And if you look for literature, then you can't explain what's the best opinion. The leading to this DVD, that's that together with Hans Bosma, uh, we see a lot of injured musicians, especially wind players, but also singers, and we see a lot of problems because they are first treated elsewhere. And what we see that because they arrived at our uh, clinic, that there are doubtful results or treatments, and we heard a lot of misconceptions even by the doctor or the therapist or the music teacher, but also miscommunication between the doctors and the therapists and the teachers about what's the best way to perform breathing. What we also see, we have to give the same explanation to all those musicians um, and afterwards we see we have to do the same with uh, the um, uh, sportsmen and we also use this information for uh, patients with, for example, chronic pain. And what we see in the, those musicians, it's the, mostly it's the first time they get any explanation about the optimal use of the body in general, also for the uh, breathing, but also the other aspects for musicianship. And what we see, because of the, there's no awareness about it, there are many unnecessary and avoidable problems. If we give rehabilitation therapy to those musicians, we see that at the very end we hope that there's less or no complaints, uh, complaints anymore, but at the end, as a side effect, they always say, hey, I'm better playing than ever before. And we are not a music school, we are health education um, institution. Uh, so our conclusion, and that was five years ago, that we need a struct uh, structural exchange of information that it is necessary and not only between doctors and therapists but also between the musicians and especially to the teachers and we also need um, exchange of information with uh, scientists. And that's about the uh, uh, physical but also the psychosocial aspects of making music and especially in this case of breathe uh, about wind instrument playing. We organized in 2009 an international congress about breath support and embouchure that is how to make a sound uh, with wind playing and uh, about singing because there are a lot of common principles. Afterwards, there were a lot of uh, people, they had questions about the topic of breathing and also from the field of sports. 
and from chronic illness because uh, IPA, that Congress was held in the rehabilitation center. And so we thought, hey, maybe there are a lot of common issues we can combine with each other. So if we think about top class musicians and sporters, there are a lot of same uh, principles. They both have a high level of performance at the edge of human um, uh, limits and they every time they try to improve uh, their uh, performance and to go beyond that limit. And that give, gives a high level of physical stress, also mental stress and in their environment also social stress because there are always is a public that's judging the person making music. Is it nice enough? Is it spectacular enough? And for the sportsman it's important how is the level of performance? Will he won prizes or not? Both have the problem that they are on the edge of the human capacities and they try several ways to improve their functioning and their performance. In that case, everything has to be okay. If there is some limitation in physical aspect or in social aspect or in uh, 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 mental uh, aspect, that will diminish the degree of performance. In all those situations, there's a high need for oxygen. And if there are problems, that will immediately limit the level of performance. The other question we can ask ourselves is, there are lessons to learn from the top class performers for the chronic patients in rehabilitation. There are a lot of uh, patients with chronic complaints more than three months and they are also in a situation with high levels of stress and they have also their own limitations of their own capacities and they try to improve it so that there's a lot of uh, same principles in this area. And what we see there's a need for information about the, what we will call in this DVD the total concept of brief, breathing for musicians, for sports and for chronic illness. And what it will be, that will be explained later on. What we hope is that with optimal use of the total breathing, that higher level of musical and sport performance will be re reached. And that is important for sportsmen, but that's also important for musicians. That's the only thing they are interested in to improve their performance. And what we hope for the patients with an optimal use of the total breathing concept, that there is a lower levels of, uh, levels of stress, less pain, I, we hope, and an increased body awareness. And that's very important in the case of uh, chronic pain, for example, that you can't feel exactly what you have to feel. And what we can learn, especially from wind players and singing, is that breathing is important for everybody of us and that it's closely related to the breathing to the other parts of the body. And that will, exp will be explained in detail later on in this DVD. And what we also saw in practice is that motor problems with motor function for a violin player in the hand we can resolve it by normalization of the breathing pattern and how it works will also be shown in this DVD. What's important to keep in mind is that there is an early start of problems. For musicians, we know that at the start of the, at the conservatory or the music school, there is more than 80% has limitations in functioning for making music and we think it's the same in sport. So there's a need for early uh, start of instruction and maybe at the primary or secondary school if we have 
uh, we, we talk about uh, talent, uh, young talents. The problem for this D with VD was where to find evidence-based information. And uh, we also talk with a lot of experts to get information about how breathing is working. And we hope we can learn lessons from top class sports. We also hope we can learn lessons from patients with chronic illness and for the clinical practice that we think if there is an exchange of this knowledge between the fields of music, sports and chronic illness, what I told before, that will enhance the knowledge in all those three fields. So the goals of this DVD is to present the state of the art interdisciplinary overview of the physical aspects of breathing and the close connections with the other parts of the body. We also hope this, that this collaboration between sports, patient care and music will promote an integration between those fields of knowledge. And we hope that the number of avoidable problems we see in clinical practice will diminish uh, with this knowledge and that also the level of performance in sports and music both will be improved in the future. What we present in this DVD is the registration on the one hand of some for us unknown or not well described phenomena um, as a kind of registration for the start of uh, to, to do research with it because there's a lack of evidence-based information with the registration of this kind of phenomena. We hope other scientists can do more evidence-based research. And we think all those particular phenomena will be a part of the total concept of total breathing. We will show the direct influence of the belly area on the breathing system. Also, we will uh, show the direct connection between the mouth area and the diaphragma. The three diaphragm is the, um, the biggest muscle tendon uh, organ in the body, but there is hardly no informa medical information to find in, for example, PubMed database. But it is very important and has a lot of influence both on the lungs and on the, the belly area. We also will show that the position of the head on breathing and on motor function of the upper extremity is more direct than a lot of people realize. And what we will also do in this DVD, that we will show performances of top class musicians and sportsmen to registrate and to illustrate those aspects as just told. What we also will show is that as examples of how to do this in clinical practice. We didn't find a lot of structural practical information about the influence of those principles and so we give information how to do a clinical examination or inspection of normal breathing and not as a doctor or as a therapist but also as a coach or as a musician that you can stand before the mirror or that you're teacher can look with simple details how to, uh, to observe a normal breathing pattern. We will also show examples of abnormal breathing and there are some examples about individual and team or group exercises. For example, in team sport it's important for team building how to improve your body awareness and the training of those total breathing concept related aspects. And it's, as I told before, important to do it on youth level and on adults level. 
So there are given examples of both. At the end of this introduction, I would like to thank all of the many top class musicians, the sportsmen, the coaches, the conductors, the Noordelijke Hogeschool Leeuwarden, Ecocoach Heerenveen, Turns Amsterdam and the technical staff of Revalidatie Friesland for their voluntary participation in this DVD. Without their help, the creation of this DVD was really not possible. So many thanks. For you, because you buy this DVD, we hope that we can use this money to develop a next educational DVD about this topic and that is possible now. We hope you will enjoy this DVD. Rest breathing is only diaphragmatic. The chest does not move. Just one finger causes effort breathing. The chest moves too. Moving both hands causes more effort expansion, costo-diaphragmatic breathing. Returning to rest breathing or diaphragmatic breathing. Finger movement again causes effort breathing. Hand movement causes more expansion. Return to rest breathing or diaphragmatic breathing. A stretched turn position facilitates diaphragmatic breathing. Fixation of the ribs. The ribs don't move. Return to normal position. Try diaphragmatic breathing.
only back and flank movements. Only back and flank movements. No chest movement. No chest movement. Diagnostic test. This is most important. Movement at the back. Flanks expand and belly expands. Control maneuver for diaphragmatic breathing and respiration stumble. Control differences left and right movements of the diaphragm. Control chest expansion at the back. Control of symmetry. Control of lung fill at the back. Avoid paradoxal or chest breathing. Avoid chest breathing without diaphragm action. Control with hands. Avoid paradoxal or chest inhalation. Paradoxal inhalation with a trumpet is wrong. Paradoxal inhalation again. Paradoxal inhalation in frontal view.
crown stretching to reinforce the breath support with manual control. Crown stretching to avoid paradoxal inhalation. This stimulates costodiaphragmatic or total breathing. With the trumpet playing. And lung blade. <laughs> Semi-closed muscle chain between the head and the feet. Contact between active foot behavior, the pelvic bottom muscles, belly and head. The saddle seat exercise to reinforce pelvic bottom muscles. pelvic bottom muscles actively tensed. Wrong position. This can cause hernia inguinalis in the lower abdominal muscles. Total breathing. Total breathing with the trumpet. A diagnostic maneuver for the control of symmetric diaphragm movement, the control of diaphragmatic stumble. Shoulder elevation to use top lung segments. With the trumpet. Eye position influences breathing type and pitch. Looking upwards strongly facilitates higher pitch. It decreases the diaphragmatic contractions. Eyes focusing upwards stimulate chest inhalation and decrease diaphragm activity. of eye focus influences the pitch. Looking to the right or left strongly weakens the force of the embouchure on that particular side. Looking strongly upwards stimulates smile and press. Inhalation has to be inaudible. Use a round throat, like speaking the word or.
Mouthpiece buzz causes smile and press. Noiseless air buzz is preferable. Meer tussenposes. Ha ha ha, zonder stem. Ja, goed zo. Met de trompet. Hetzelfde zonder geluid, dus het blazen door het monster zonder geluid. Geen geluid. Open die mond. Diaphragmatic control whilst playing. Diaphragmatic control whilst playing. Diagnosing respiratory stumble. Respiratory stumble is disturbed diaphragm function, left or right. Or both. <laughs> Diaphragmatic control whilst playing. Diagnosing respiratory stumble. expanded belly to keep the diaphragm low. An expanded belly makes a strong contraction of the diaphragm possible. Ah! <laughs> 
control manoeuvre for diagnosing respiratory stumble. Up and downstreaming of the air influences the pitch. Bouncing attack. Too tight clothing hinders breathing and relaxed playing.
Okay. <laughs> Diagnosing sacroiliacal blockage. Partial shortening of one leg. Exercises to correct the scoliosis. A scoliosis can lead to respiratory stumble and diaphragmatic dysfunction. Hello, in this presentation I will give information about breath support for wind instruments playing and for singing and I will explain a theoretical part and I will explain a more pra practical part. In that practical part there are also aspects important for sports and for chronic pain situations. In this presentation I will give first an introduction then I will talk about what we talk about the definition uh, about embouchure and embouchure. Then I will give information about breath support, about breathing in total, and then I will focus on the abdominal area. That's a very important area for the breathing concept. Then I will give, give special information about the influence of stress and why, the reason why Stress is so important in the breathing, uh, um, in the total breathing. And I will give an exercise. You can do it yourself or if you have patience or you are together with your pupil as a teacher, then you can learn or teach your pupil how to do it with a simple exercise. 
and I will finish with some conclusions. If we look at how music is uh, made by, um, by, uh, by wind players, then we have the term embouchure, that's what happens here in this area, and embouchure. Then we have an example of the garden hose. A garden hose has water and it comes from the tap. And if we turn the tap open, then we have more water. And if we close it, then we have less water. That is what we call embouchure. And embouchure is the whole system until the mouth, the very end of the garden hose. And that is the part we call embouchure. And that's the mouth area in a wind player or in a singer. What we can do with wind playing is that we can change the opening of the garden hose. And if we open it, we have a flat stream. And if we tight the very end, then we have a very far stream of water. And that's the same what happens if you are blowing air in your instrument. And you can make high notes or low notes in this way. If we have the definition of embouchure, then that's this part, everything below the mouth. All the physical aspects to create a force for upward stream to produce a tone. And the metaphor is a bellow. I will show you with a picture, picture. But that is what you see here below. And embouchure is what happens in the mouth area that you close or open the end of the garden hose or your mouth. If we press on the bellow, air is coming out of the opening the green arrow and is going to the mouth. The mouth is producing, of controlling the air direction and the, the amount of air in one moment. And that is going over the rim of the flute in this case. And that will produce the sound. There are a lot of muscles active and related to embouchure and embouchure, not only in the mouth, but it starts with balance muscles that you can stand and that you can use the force from the floor. The pelvic area, the abdominal wall. Inside the abdomen, there are also muscles of the bowel. The thoracic area, the arms. small muscles of the thoracic area and the mouth area itself. Very important in this is also the big muscle tendon system of the diaphragm. There's not much written about it in humans, but from horses, for example, we learned a lot about how it works in human. Breath support, there's no consented definition about it. There are some not consented definitions, but there's a lack in our opinion, to our opinion. And we will give a, a definition. It is the force of the expired air column created by the body structures related to a controlled expiration. And there are many areas or organs responsible for this. The abdominal area, including the butt, but also the thoracic and cervical muscles, the soft tissue, and sometimes the airs and the legs to help you play or sing notes at any volume while still being on pitch. If we can see it here, then you see this is the, the red arrow 
indicating what breath support provokes. And what we see in a laying, flat laying person, the green arrows show that it's not only important to have it to the middle, but also combining it with an upward position of that stream. It has to come out of the mouth. And what important is, if we look on the picture, we see that this small picture, that there are muscles in that direction and there are also muscles between the ribs that are in the opposite direction. That's because you use the one for forced expiration or for forced inspiration. And that is a very complex system of small muscles between the ribs. I will focus now on the abdominal area. The abdominal area is this area. And there are the bowels, but also the liver and the spleen and other organs above in this abdominal area. And it starts or it ends with the pelvic area. As said before, we can see if we have the transfer slide of the bowel, we see there are several muscles. And that is a complex structure, but it is important to realize that there are many muscles in this area. And they are working on another level and they are more sensitive to stress than other muscles. What happens with stress and why is stress so important in the system? That's, you can imagine if there is a big tiger in front of you, you, you can do several things. You can fight back, you can fly, or you can freeze, which is a picture of a heron in the marsh. And he's so well camouflaged that he can move with his environment so the tiger won't see the bird. And that's what you human also do in situations of acute or also with chronic stress situations. In all those situations there are certain physical aspects. And as we can see in this table, there are, if you have different organs, for example the heart, you can see the reaction on stress is heart rate uh, acceleration or the lungs that there's hyperventilation or that there is an improvement of your vision or hearing and that's all because you need a lot of oxygen to survive the situation for flighting or fighting you need a lot of energy for your muscles and for your heart to work and to supply all the blood to your body. And also you, are, you have to be very sensitive to see what happens around you. What we also see below is that the bowel and the bladder that they are going to blockade or to freeze or that there is a surplus and for activity. And I will explain why that is important and about that, that extra activity, the skunk is a nice example, nice, that there is also a direct relation between stress and bowel function. What you also see in this table is that there are many influences on playing or for example also for sport. In if you have an improved heart rate, then it's diff more difficult to play long notes and you will hear a vibration in it. So for example, what some wind players do is that they do a beta blockade, propanol for example. So they have a diminished heart rate and then they, they have a more equal tone. So that's a kind of doping. 
for the lungs, that means that there is, if you're going to breathe more up, that you have a lower breath support. And playing low, long notes or low notes or very high notes, that's more difficult to perform. And because of your heaven, improved vision and hearing, there will be a change in musical perception and also in time perception. So what you see is a lot of musicians will play much faster than they did in the exercise in a calm situation. For the bowel and the bladder, that will also give a very big influence in breath support. And in the next uh, sheets I will show you how this works. What happens, what I told, is that there will be a blockade of the abdominal area. If we see the picture of the human body, then this area will all be blockade. That's a big area. What you see, the normal breathing isn't possible anymore, but you need more oxygen because of the stress situation. And if this, this is not possible, you need an other mechanism so to have enough oxygen in your body. And because this is an old mechanism, the evolution has developed a system how to overcome this, this lack of oxygen. What the lungs are going to do, they are going to breathe more superficial, more proximal in this area. And so you are going to breathe here and you are going to help with your secondary breathing muscles, like the scalenus muscles. What happens with hyperventilation in this situation, it's very easy to, to have all the oxygen from out of the lungs in your body. There's a special system and the oxygen concentration is going up and there is a lowering of coal dioxide concentration in your blood. That both concentration changes is a signal, a direct signal to your bowel system to blockade extra. So you see a vicious circle of this mechanism. And what happens at the very end that the breath support is dimin diminishing during the stress. So if you know how it works, then you need to be aware for your own body, I think. So I will give you an exercise to improve your body awareness and also to reduce the arousal in this area and to relax the muscles, to breathe not in this area where hyperventilation exists, but to breathe slowly and more in this area. At the end, you have a better defecation or end or bladder function, for example, in chronic pain patients that will help and less pain in the belly or the back. When the belly, because of the belly and the back, they are closely related to each other. What we also hope that if you do this exercise, that you at the very end you have a better control of your playing with the upper extremity, with a higher level of performance in the very end. What you can see is a body this area, and what you can do is that you turn small rounds with your fingers to your whole body area. And if you turn it slowly and you go in the, in the deep structures to the bowel system, it will, will first feel painful, but you have to accept it. And you have to breathe to this area and not to breathe in this area to fixate it this more and more. And this you can do every morning, you can do it before sleeping, and it takes five minutes, 
but if you do it every day, then you, this will give you a kind of temperature measurement how your stress level is. So take home message of this presentation is that breath support is crucial for playing a wind instrument or singing. It is built up from the pelvic bottom. It's very stress sensitive mechanism. So this will give you especially problems when you are playing in front of an audience, for example. So if you are doing exercise with playing or with sports, then it can help you to imagine that there is a public in front of you. And then you can control these mechanisms, what give a negative influence on breath support. You can train this aspect at home. Important is what I said that in a performance situation, the N and the embouchure and the singing and the sporting, but also pain levels will diminish if you can control this. And that it will be better if you do it, or a therapist is doing, that, that you can feel yourself what the level of muscle tension is in this area. What I explained in this presentation is that there are a lot of other organs in the body connected to this system. And I didn't tell you a lot about the mouth area, but in other presentations on this DVD, there are shown pictures how this is related, all this whole system with the mouth, with the embouchure, and also with motor function of your upper extremity. Thank you for your attention.